the smaller one first and then you make the bigger one fit the little one now the shoe I do have that so it comes out like this this foot is coming out like this so this foot is much bigger so we got to watch for that even though at this point it is a little it is sticking out only a little bit more so we're going to again oof, now we're shaping not just getting wood out but shaping under the tree Ugh. rounding the shoe a little bit away from the other one Now this one, they're about almost the same. And I want to get that shadow in there, that separation shadow. So that separation shadow in here as well. Oops. Hit my light. So I want to, first I want to make sure these are shaped relatively the same and relatively the same size. He doesn't have a size 10 on one foot and a size 14 on the other foot. I suppose. Though people, there are some people who have that condition, but but in this case A little bit of cleaning up there. Okay, it is still one foot is still bigger than the other. And it does kind of almost look like this one here that's sticking out. Whittle both ends. Yeah, I never had this much trouble with just a foot. I guess it's just the way the router line lined up. That's another thing is right here. I get tip down, thumb on the carving, butt end of the chisel up. So it's getting there. It's getting there still. I think this might be a little bit I make it one more sweep and bring that in. And it's really interesting. I mean, if you look at it this way, and I think it's it's good. When we first started, one foot was bigger than the other, but when you turned it down this way and around this way, it looked kind of okay. But the reason why you, I mean, it's not like you're going to look at the bottom of a carving. You're only looking at the front and the top sides of the carving. You you want to make it right because somewhere the, the eye will figure out, even though you're looking at something that looks fine, you begin to think there's something wrong with it. <sighs> okay. Now what I... Excuse me again. Let me separate the foot from the... That there okay now what I want to do uh, now I want to do a little bit of detailing on the foot I want to I want to give a little bit of undercut here so and we we'll get into the pants because this is just a regular like pair of jeans or heavy slacks so we're gonna see that nice shadow of the separation Fingers out of the way. 
and you're going to dig in there and make this nice and you're going to with that green the head green there and just by doing that you make a good separation between the pants and the leg and the uh, shoe All right. Same with here. Let's make a nice, we want some nice shadow. Shadow will separate. Oops. Like I said, the holding hand glove does not have. I love this glove because it really lasts over those yellow uh, gloves. Or whatever because those just wear out so easy but this it's a toss-up when something wears better probably not gonna feel better I don't know the philosophy I think I mean just a little bit of thinning oops all right what I want to do get into some details I always with my foot characters oops not too much just trim this up a little bit actually it should be this way and then this way just you're just kissing it nothing nothing more we'll come back to the heel but we want to get the sole then now we keep going now that Ethel has it all is laid down and curled up uh, I'm going to write this, and we're going to create the heel. <coughs> cut in deep. Cut a chip. Get kind of in almost to the middle of the foot. Now, since you're not going to see the, the, the other side of the foot, we're not going to go that far. But the deeper you go, the more shadow it's going to create. Same thing here. All right, I think this is a little deeper. I'll probably get that to clean up. Let's take our pencil, start with the heel. And with the heel, then we start with the sole in the front. Now, remember this is lifted up. Well, we'll start here, we'll do this. Little, just a little bit. And then what happens is since this is lifted up, then we're gonna lift this, the pencil mark up. The sole will come down a little bit, then back up again. Come up, then come back down. Now what's gonna happen, I think we're pretty, is it going to come up with it? And then, well, that's, that disappears from there. This thing here, I think we might have some. So it'd be the same, generally the same. Take our V tool. Make sure I'm still in the camera. Nice sharp V tool. And of course, there's the always the lecture of having good sharp knives. I think mine is on a scale of one to ten, probably about an eight. One of these days, I got to do. I got to settle down and really get these my knives a good sharpen. One of the a nice shout out is uh, if you look on, I think it's Amazon or other places, Ev, Evan, Evanwood, Ev, Evan, Evanwood. Uh oh. He's from our Rochester, Minnesota group. He's got a video out on, on uh, good uh, knife sharpening. And I, I 
prescribe to his way of thinking on how you keep the knives sharp. Now I'm bringing the, the, the um, heel in a little bit, kind of just at an angle now. Not, not straight down, but it's going to come at an angle, which means we're going to have to get in here and again, careful, we want a good shadow to separate the feet. Be careful, you're on the end here, so don't bear down too much. So we're getting the V tool in there. Okay, see how the heel comes in. So it's sort of like a cowboy boot. If you're ever doing cowboy boots, that's what that's a little bit of what we're doing here. I'd like to scoop this just a little bit here to show that the the foot is up there we go now we don't have to do it to the one under the tree again i want to make that nice sharp separation of foot and pants and if you can with the knife, make a nice kind of a V cut. It's best if you use make a V cut with the with a knife because this is worn. But if you can't get in there, if you can only get in there with the V tool, then so be it. So that adds that that crease. Now the pants, there's nothing really to it except. Take that pack, let's put in a, we're gonna put in where the knee is. So let's just make sure, because this is where the knee is gonna be. And so therefore, put in this bent clothing, bent mark, and just kinda of bring a little bit up to it and down to it. Okay, good separation. We're going to have some more creases later. And then again, a nice, really sharp, I always call that, I always say five degrees this way, five degrees this way, just like it, just a little bit towards your hand, just a little bit. So you have this nice, sharp, crease and let's add a little more see that shadow in between that that's I love that it's a nice separation now the I want to say the behind is kind of this kind of a shape so in other words um, I'm sorry it had a lot of pencil this in as opposed to the crotch area we don't have the crotch area here the crotch area is sort of like a V down but this is more of the other direction so we're just, we're not going to get in too much detail here of this, just enough to create a little behind. So we're on just enough to create a little behind there. Make it more rounder. And we'll get into the, the cleaning up later. Um, I'd like to have just a little bit of a scoop here to separate. So in other words, it, it kind of, maybe a little bit almost, I'm going to say bell bottoms out a little bit. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Make sure that's all nice and clean. And we'll come back to that later, I suppose. Make sure you still have the separation down here and rounded there we go and in the front we want just a little bit same thing this thing is not too deep because he doesn't 
The legs are not really that long. And the pants is not that much longer than the legs. Just a little bit of this. Now, if you can, on your figures, this one here doesn't have much. But since the knee is about here, just going to make it so this, oops, this part bulges a little more where the knee is. Now, in this case, it's just going to be a hint. <sighs> okay, moving on up. Make sure you get in there. We're going to do the tree next. Now, the tree is a project. <sighs> I might just get you started so we can keep moving on. The tree is a project. Um, umpteen stages. Now, what we do is we take our pencil and we do some V's all over the place. Make sure it is put one different from the last Now we'll get to the bottom. I can probably put some at the bottom here. Okay, once you got all of that, I'll let you do that when I go reach down. Get a slug of water here. And then bring it. Okay, moving on. <laughs> Now we'll move, some of these will be moved around. Essentially we want to keep keep going here and we want to run into another V. We want that to run into another V. Now I think we can do this for the, for the bottom. Now this thing here, I want this to run into another V but I want it close to the center. So we're going to extend, extend that a little bit. Um, bring this in because what's going to happen, I'll extend this a little bit. So this can go here. Erasure there. We want it to hit at least whatever percent. I'll have to create another V here which is going to go here. This isn't working out as well as I want it to, but see, I don't like this, this square. So I'll come back to it later. Let's finish. This goes here. That goes here. Now let's pretend that there's one here. That does, that's all right, a little bit there. All right, so let's put one down here, maybe one here. All right, let's see, what do I want? If we move this, I want to say this up, so this. No, let's see, this goes up and this, no, that's still not right. Well. No, that's, that's better. I think that's better. Something like that. Next, take the chisel to what you just wrote. Going against the grain here, up with the grain rather. Now you could have, this is a lot larger, you can do um, twice as many smaller branches. You could do that too. This is just sort of a branch characterization of an evergreen tree. We'll bring this down a little more. Oh, 
I know why this feels so funny. Why is my oh. Okay. Oh, oh. I put my glove down with the bag and Ethel sleeping on. We don't wanna Yeah, we don't wanna wake her up. So I don't have my chisel glove on. I'm taking the lesser of the two problems. Now generally I should throw her down into the basement, but I, she's got older now. When I do this, and just, oh my goodness, I'd have to put her in the basement. Little kitten wants any, anywhere and everywhere. And, and it's so sad to throw her down in the basement and she looks up at me as I'm closing the door. What did I do wrong? Well, what you did wrong is you were a kitten, that's why. <laughs> I'm going to pretend there's a V back here. And do we have most all of it? Okay. Now I'm going to do some of these. We'll come back later. Is what I want to do is now again we we draw all the V's. Nice and deep. Very deep. Deep enough so you don't hurt yourself or hurt the carving. Somebody's got to see something. But what am I going to say? Oh no. Anyways, now what you want to do is you want to cut underneath where these line comes together. Underneath. Trying to think what kind of a what am I picture here. I mean, if you do, if you have this rough out, so you can even take the same pattern of what I've what I've done here. Is see what we're trying to do is what's what comes up is always under. What comes up is under. See, it's always under. And we want to create this very deep shadow, very, very deep. Because there's two steps. Sometimes I just get started doing this. Like I said, I can probably come back later. Make sure that's underneath. Let me get out of there. Make sure this is underneath. Make sure this is underneath. And so on. And that's after you get that done. Come again, and you come in and watch your tip. Ugh. You want to get even deeper. You know, here, I'm going to show you something. This is with my really, really, really older um, rough outs or cutouts movies. I've have a, I've had a, um, LV knife there. And that's my second one because here's my first one. In fact, most of all of these, this is my knife, and I'd keep grinding and grinding and grinding. Now, the reason why I don't throw this away is because this makes a great, and you got to be careful, a great digging knife. A great oomph knife. You get in there, it has a lot of oomph. Oh, has that got a lot of oomph? That goes pretty deep. Look how deep that goes. And you got to be careful in realizing that blade is small so it doesn't slip. 
that needs I do keep it sharp but it still needs some some sharpening so if you ever have a knife that is really getting low don't throw them away like I said they're good oomph knives if you really oops I cracked my knuckle now this is underneath whereas get out of there this cut this in again is underneath here get some good oomphing going on maybe a couple more I do feel a little uncomfortable doing regular carving Ugh, with this knife but when you get in there yeah I can see it needs sharpening too look at that that needs to be sharpened all right we'll just put that aside so he's not completely retired <sighs> that knife that has come in handy in a lot of spots the under one comes in okay here's what I want to do is I want to make sure I get all of these right even these little things because remember what's under what's what is at the bottom is under what's under is under okay we'll come back later on this but uh, or I want to move on you can do the rest then I'll just extra twist to it and what that does we'll be doing something like this with the beard now you could do anything you want with your tree here I mean I've take a v-tool and make a bunch of cuts take your knife make some cuts and then the v-tool and but This, had, this is a little more, I would say, caricature realism. I don't know if that's the best way to put it. I mean, it's not as real. I think I got ideas for real trees. Maybe I should carve, do a video on real trees, a real, more realistic. Okay, see how that doll turns like that. It's more caricature. Okay, you keep doing that. I gotta take a quick break. Not only a bathroom break, but let my blood circulate to my legs break. There's a ketchup. 